organization that I work with, I work for Green Action for Health and Environmental Justice. Go to the website, sign up to our newsletter, donate, 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 donate. We we don't have a big budget, but we're hard working, we're passionate. That's the first thing I gotta put up. That's like the the doing the housekeeping piece. Um, aside from that, there's is there's there's efforts and issues in your community. I'm a I'm a community based person. I hear about the, the statewide and the national. I think when we take care of home, we can solve a lot of these problems. So what I would ask you all to do is figure out what the issues, if you live in Oakland, Oakland's got its share, its, its, its problems. You got the West Oakland, you got keeping coal out of Oakland, you got the port issue. Out in Richmond, they got the, the, uh, the uh, refineries. I do, I spend a lot of time out in the city in the Bayview Hunters Point community and you guys would be amazed at what they're looking at between the 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 legacy of a naval radioactive lab testing laboratory that's got radioactive contamination they build in on top of that releasing some of that contamination uh, contamination and the entire bay is is in, is being threatened by sea level rise especially when there's toxins right there on the on the waterfront so just just to to re reiterate that Get engaged at the local level, and and when I when we talk about these issues, it's not a silver bullet solution for any of this stuff. We gotta attack this from multiple fronts. I like to think of it as this triad of community organizing, policy, and when I say policy, I mean pol politicians, uh, laws, the politics, the whole political the whole political arena, community organizing, policy, and media. And the media is the piece that I, I like to talk about when I'm when I'm talking to young folks because that's something that they are experts at. Social media, creative, whether it's film or photos, finding ways to engage folks on these issues is so powerful. And I could give you reports and reports about all this information about the city of San Francisco doing some funny business, the developer doing some funny business, the EPA doing some funny business, sacrificing communities. Facts. But when I, when I bring forward somebody that's from one of these communities and they tell you about how their mother died from cancer, that their grandmother died from cancer, that both their children have asthma and they're developing some other respiratory issues, that's what changes people. That's what is powerful. So, again, community organizing, media, and policy, and just getting engaged on the local level. You guys love Oakland. You love wherever you're from. Get engaged. Find out what's going on. There's organizations that are there that are working on these issues. Like mine. We're in San Francisco, Oakland, Richmond. We're in Kettleman City. We're in Utah. And that's one of the things that is a lot of ideas that are going through my head talking about talk up here with this really amazing panel. But one of the things that I did want to mention is, make, is, is folks connecting the dots. So when they say no Oakland, no coal in Oakland, where is it coming from? You know, when they're talking about extracting oil somewhere, it's not just the, the ports and, the, and, the, and the, the trains and the pipelines, but the source of it and the export of it and the processing of it. Fully co connected all these dots is so important. But again, I just can't impress upon you all more. Get engaged at the local at the local level, and, and I and I'm kind of preaching to the popes here. I know that because everybody here seems to be engaged and seems to get it. But and I, I just want to continue to to put that out there. Let's give it up for Brian one more time. Andy Leonard. Yeah, people often say that we preach to the choir, and I just want to tell you there is a reason the minister preaches to the choir, and that is because we have each other's back. We help sustain each other through these hard times, and the choir gets shit done. So I don't think preaching to the choir is any problem with that. Um, Jakarta talked about how our economy has failed us and is not working. And closely related to that, I want to say that our democracy has failed us and not working. It has failed us to the point that the experts say that we don't actually have a democracy, we have an oligarchy. And as that so-called democracy has failed us more than ever, I mean, it's a problem since its start, but it's just eroded so badly, a lot of people are turning their back on the democracy because it's failing us. And when we leave it unattended and turn our back to it, we leave it wide open for the corporations to come in and hijack it, for the fascists to come in and hijack it, for the oligarchs to come in and hijack it. And so one of the things we have got to do is claim our democracy, is fix our democracy. Our democracy should be the best tool that we have for ensuring a safe, clean environment, a fair, just economy, 
good public education, good healthy food. Our democracy should be the best food we have, and we can't access it right now. We can't access it for two reasons. One is because it is so dominated with corporate money that we are unable to reach it. And the second thing is because they are throwing up obstacles to participation for a lot of the people who share a lot of the same values that we have. And that's why Greenpeace has thrown down with a major campaign on the democracy. We are working to protect and expand voting rights and to get corporate money, especially fossil fuel money, out of our democracy. So my plea to all of you is that whatever else you care about, whether it's good public schools or mass transit or, or any other issues, save some space for working on our democracy. Because a healthy democracy is a precondition for a healthy environment and healthy communities and a healthy economy. Let's give it up for Andy Leonard. Hop Hopkins. Yeah. So, um, I appreciate what they said about the co-ops, because that's right, man. You know we got to think about how we can create alternatives. I think that the resist, we get stuck in that sometimes. I want to encourage everyone, again, not to get stuck there, but resist, build, and win. Just as well as we're resisting, we also got to try to, pre, we got to try to be in projects that prefigure the future that we want right now. We cannot wait and just continue to resist and resist and just resist. We have to actually build. So I want to encourage everybody to think about being involved in those types of projects that are prefigure that, think about and live the future that we want actually right now because we are not the leaders today that we need to be to tomorrow to actually create the world that we need, right? And so I would say that in being part of the oldest, largest member-run environmental organization, I would say join us. You know, there's a table back there, Donna, Donna Naps right there, she can sign you up. Uh, you can join, there's a local San Francisco Bay Area chapter, chapter here, you can sign up to get connected with our federal resist work. We put out emails, uh, tweets, all those social media pieces we're out there. I mean, we got a big machine, so if you want a lot of stuff, go sign up and you'll get it. I guarantee you. Um, and I would say get involved in local, get involved locally with what's going on here. Like I said, I didn't want to give too many shout outs. I, I work with a lot of people here. You know, there's some Interline folks here. There's Just Cause here. There's the Ella Baker Center. There's Hip Hop or Change. There's a lot of local stuff, but like I said, I, I actually don't live here. I'm from the National, so I want y'all to be able to to be able to be influenced by who y'all are, but I think there's lots of groups here, and so, and this resistance summer that Annie's talking about here, that's serious business. There's lots of folks putting up some trainings for free, so definitely get trained. I'm not saying you can't be an activist or organizer without some training, I'm just saying when people are giving you some free shit, you need to stand up and get in line, right? And think like, a, think like an organizer, not an activist, and the difference between an activist and an organizer, an activist is kind of that lone wolf, they just act and do shit on their own. And this society likes to highlight that and really blow that up. But you really want to be an organizer where you think about being a, a, an activist is only accountable to themselves. An organizer is accountable to the community in which they are from. And when you're accountable to a larger um, um, issue than just your own ego and your own will, then you got to think about shit differently. Is what I'm doing actually building something larger than just serving myself, my own self-interest? First of all, you need to be for yourself, but when you're thinking about it larger, be an organizer. So in events like this, never go anywhere by yourself. One, for safety and security, but two, because that's what an organizer does. You build every place you go. So next event you come to, meet some people here. Don't walk away from here with the same people you came from, you came here with. Go out here with two, three new folks and figure out where they're from and do some and do some organizing that way. And the, only, the last thing I would say is, for us as an organization, we're going through some internal uh, changes looking at how we operate and what culturally we need to do in order to actually be better externally, right? And I'm the face of some of that external partnership work. But what I would say is what we had to do is take a look at our organization, understand the, our own personal and organizational power and privilege and the role we can play in, the role we have historically played, where that's been great and where that's been problematic and how we can move into the future in a different way. And each one of us, no matter what oppressed background we come from, you have your own certain level of power and privilege. And the sooner you can understand what that is and deal with that in a way that seeks to minimize your own power and extend that power and privilege to other folks around you who are less fortunate in those areas, the better off we'll be. And so I would just say that there's a, there's a lot of well-made organizations and people out there who aren't aware of that. And in, in the effort to do well, they do dirty because they're not, a, they're not sure where they're supposed to act. And so they just act without being in concert with other folks. So be well, peace, and love, y'all. Thanks a lot. Hip Hop for Change. David